want more of you and less of me. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to worship here with the faith community of Cross of Hope this third Sunday in Lent. It has been a full year now since we have uh, gone to a digital worship as the primary source of our worship gathering. And as our pandemic continues, this will continue for some time. We invite you to gather around these symbols and signs of God's grace and love that holds us together. We continue to gather around a bowl with a bit of water to remember the baptismal covenant, a Bible to remember God's steadfast word of love and grace that holds us together, and a candle. And I'll invite you to take time now and light that candle as a strong symbol of the light of Christ that continues to hold us together in and as the body of Christ as we share this journey together. For God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. So friends, let us take a few moments and return to the one who is full of compassion. fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. 
wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey now in the way of Jesus. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace, and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. 
A reading from Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is heaven or above, that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for their iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name the, the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Word of God, word of life. Good morning, everyone. This is the third Sunday in Lent. I'm going to read you uh, Psalm 19, 1 through 14. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. One night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the end of the world where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber it rejoices like a cha champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edges of heaven and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from the burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and reviews the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statues of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, and then honey in the comb. By then also is your servant enlightened and keeping them. There is your, its great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get domin dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from 1 Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? 
Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ to the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Word of God, word of life. Friends, I just want to take a few moments and gather with our children if you want to come and come close and spend a few moments together. We're talking today about God breaking through the clutter. And the clutter is all of those things that would distract you and, and steal your attention away from God. And, and so what I, what I want to offer today is just a way to start our day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this with you this week. And so um, every day when you get up, before you, before you rush to breakfast or your feet hit the ground even, when your parents are waking you up, uh, uh, I just want to invite you to say, thank you God for this new day. Will you try it with me? Thank you, God, for this new day. You, it's, almost, it's almost like a, a, a song, right? A thank you, God, for this new day. It rolls off very easily. It's very simple. Uh, but it could be a way to help ground our, our day each, ta- each time we wake up uh, in Jesus, in God's love. And see what that does for you here as you continue to, 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 to abound in God's love and hope together. Friends, uh, it's good to spend a little time together. I'll invite you to pray with me. You can repeat after me as we pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who gives us a new day filled with your love and life. Help me know this today and share this always. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends, I miss you, I love you, and hope to see you soon. God bless you. God breaking through is a theme that both proclaims a truth of faith encountered in scripture this Lent and evokes the hope and longing of this journey. Sometimes it's experienced very easily uh, and sometimes uh, not so much. It's harder to see and know God breaking through. But God's word reveals a living and loving God breaking into the journey in ways that continue to teach us how to see and know and love God, still breaking into the journey that we share now. In many ways, this time of pandemic makes it easy to name dry times and disappointment. The more challenging and necessary exercise, perhaps, may be to see God breaking through. But breakthrough God does. And today we're invited to reflect on God breaking through the clutter. Now, I know for many of you an image popped into your mind right away. For me, it was my office. And Margie Reed is just burying her head in her hands right now laughing. But what comes to mind right away for you when you consider the clutter? Perhaps it's the garage or a specific drawer in the house. For many, it's the political rhetoric and the 24-hour news cycle with voices swarming. The near-overwhelming busyness of our lives can be be considered the clutter. A consuming desire for success, perhaps, money, power, or other self-serving wants. By definition, the clutter is anything that distracts from or competes for attention and energy with the central grounding important things, the things of God from a lens of faith, love, service, and community. And as we encounter our gospel story today, I want to invite you to listen for and look for, if you want to read along here, God breaking through the clutter and what this might reveal for us to help us see, know, and love God. Our gospel reading today is from the Gospel of John, the second chapter. And again, I'll invite you to read along if you would like here. We're going to start in verse 13 today.
The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God breaking through the clutter most clearly might be seen in the dramatic prophetic action of Jesus making a whip and driving out of the temple the animals and the sellers, the money changers and their coins. Even the tables were overturned. It's an aggressive and seemingly angry Jesus who tells those who were selling the doves to take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. I guess releasing doves would have been too possibly misconstrued as a sign of peace. Perhaps a jarring scene, but a strong image of God breaking through the clutter with Jesus. A new way to see God, to know God, to love God. In this early story in the Gospel of John, God, through Jesus, is breaking through the clutter of the sacrificial system of worship where at the upcoming Passover festival, animals were being, brought by pil- by, were being bought by pilgrims for sacrifice, and coins bearing Roman images were being exchanged for imageless ones, acceptable to pay the temple tax. It was the prescribed, very transactional way to see, know, and love God at the time. So in the context of our worship small group theme, It may have been less of God breaking through literal clutter than God breaking in and declaring the ways of old now clutter in the face of Jesus, the Messiah, the Lord, the revealing now of the way of God most clearly. This was prophesied at the end of Zechariah, proclaiming this coming truth where it says, There shall no longer be traitors in the house of the Lord. Of hosts on that day. And now in this, Jesus' first public action in the good news, as the Gospel of John tells it, the day foretold has now arrived. And a new way to see, know, and love God is revealed. To see God in the neighbor and in all creation. To know God as the center of your life and journey and to love God with all that you are. It's the same thing that the Ten Commandments teach in our Old Testament reading today. And this grounding in God through the way of Jesus now is the sustaining work of the Spirit to break through all of the clutter, all of those things that would demand our attention or seek to distract from those central things of loving God and living in community in love and service to our neighbor. And so we live this life with God. And how, how do we, how do we um, stay uh, um, um, centered and grounded in God, breaking through all of this clutter? Well, one is we respond to this good news in prayer. Um, one of the reflections from this past Wednesday at Let's Eat, our midweek Lenten uh, kind of Zoom supper worship wonderful menagerie, it was, it was inviting us to consider those who have gone before us uh, and taught us 
um, uh, who influenced our life of faith in some way. Uh, Pastor Heike uh, taught me how to pray the scriptures, uh, a great gift that she gave me. And one of my favorite prayers in the morning at the blessing of the new day for your school ministry is Psalm 118.24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it as we offer a time of prayer. This names the truth that the day of the Lord is today. No, not, no, not March 7th, 2021. Today, as in whatever moment you find yourself confessing these words of the psalmist to break through the clutter of whatever else would try to command ownership of the moment. Through the story of Jesus cleansing the temple, as it is often called, God is breaking through the clutter of the world and our journey to bring our focus our attention, our devotion, our day, our faith, back to God alone. And so as we put aside the clutter of all the stuff that gets in the way of following the word of God and the teaching of Jesus, we find the cross and empty grave, the amazing grace of God. Both our very our very powerlessness to the clutter of worldly things that condemn us, and the forgiveness, love, and life of God for us revealed in Jesus. It's the truth of God's presence both in the midst of temptation, trial, and pain of the clutter and in the life-giving love, service, and community that grounds and sustains us through the shared journey. So fasting as a spiritual discipline of Lent from the clutter, from these things that would distract and rob our energy, We come to know and discover again and remember the gift of God. The freedom from the transaction. If I just believe enough, if I sacrifice enough, if I say the right things at the right time, then God will love and accept me. Freedom from that. And the freedom to respond to the good news of God's centering and grounding love. To respond with a life of love and service, with forgiveness and mercy. That this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And abound in God's faithfulness. Abound in God's love and grace through our lives. So dear friends, as our Lent journey continues this year, how is God breaking through the clutter and grounding you in God's great, amazing love and grace. Jesus at the center of it all. Center of it all. From beginning to the end, it'll always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. i 
of the Ten Commandments. We respond with the words, God of promise, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church that in every situation your people's words and actions honor your name. God of promise. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. God of promise. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislatures, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. God of promise. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. As we mark a year of pandemic, Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering, especially all afflicted with the coronavirus. Defend victims of crime and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. We pray for Kim, Lydia, Tim, Susan, Pat, Linda, David, Nick, John, Sherry, Jeff, Karen, Kathy, Wendy, Carol, Dante, and Carmine, Bobby, Bill, and Jim, Dolores, Harry, Robert, Norma, Ruth, D, Cap, Tony, K, Joel, and all those we name now aloud or in silence. Be near to those who grieve, God of promise. We give thanks for blessing and gift of relationship and for our partners in ministry, our school ministry, Family Promise, Operation 505, Boy Scout Troop 126, Compassion Beyond Borders, Luther House, Lutheran Family Services, Lutheran Advocacy Ministry, Our Saviors Lutheran Church, Fort Collins, Colorado, and our Savior's Savior's Lutheran Church, Casper, Wyoming, God of promise. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to Cross of Hope and our leaders. 
so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort, clear out any clutter in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests, God of promise. The cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. Thank you for all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death, God of promise. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, please know how grateful we are for your continued giving through the ministries of Cross of Hope. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Enjoy this new musical offering from the praise team, Alive and Breathing, by Matt Mayer.
Friends, what a blessing it is to continue to share this journey in life and faith together through this time of pandemic. Just a few notes along our continued journey. Uh, we'll have walk-up communion today between 10 and 11. So if you want to come by for a brief time of prayer and sharing the Lord's Supper, please do that during that hour. Uh, happy anniversary today. Uh, sharing the gift of love and the gift of love that they have for one another is Robert and Carolyn By. So big happy anniversary. It's the 40th anniversary that you share today and just know of our abounding prayer and care and love for you as you share God's love with one another. We'll spend some time at 11 with our confirmation class there on Zoom. So that link uh, was emailed to you. So we're looking, looking forward to that, as I always do today. Um, let's eat. On Wednesday, uh, we had another 13 uh, uh, dinner tables gathered together over Zoom. It is just a beautiful time of uh, simple soup and bread and fellowship. Spend some time there in reflection and prayer together. Six o'clock, you can find the recipe for this week on page nine of your Hope Filled Happening and the link on page three. So check that out and plan to join us if you're available on Wednesday. We'll do that throughout Lent here as a time of a fellowship and worship in the middle of our week together. And as we have spent a year now uh, in during this global pandemic, I continue to be inspired so much by your continued faithfulness in your giving, in your love, in your service. Um, Jan Anderson, Lois Capen, uh, Karen Erickson, uh, now working for Family Promise as the volunteer coordinator. Um, our Family Promise ministry continues faithfully serving the people of Albuquerque. You'll find information in your Hopeful Happenings on page 5 and 6. That's the invitation and the details for our hosting, which again is digital uh, this time, and that begins next Sunday. Uh, but we're starting to collect food this week, and so please look at the instructions and invitations for how to go about uh, being in service, prayer, uh, for, with, with our Family Promise partners. Uh, and then don't forget, just a little PSA, the time changes already. Daylight Savings Time begins March 14th. So next Sunday, uh, we're going to spring ahead an hour. So just uh, take note of that as we continue to share this journey together through life and faith. God bless you, my friends. Receive now this blessing. around God's table.
to share in the gift of God's mercy, God's love and life for you on this Lenten journey. I'll invite you to uh, prepare at this time for uh, communion uh, with simple bread and wine or grape juice there in your home as we gather to share together. The words that we use are in your home resource. As we come in humbleness and gratitude, gathered here in and by God's love, the Lord be with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the world. From the earth you give us bread to eat. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Through your goodness you give us the fruit of the vine. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so gathered together in and by God's Spirit, we pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. Dear friends, at this time I'll invite you to commune the members of your household, sharing with one another a bit of bread and wine with the, with the words, body of Christ broken or given for you, blood of Christ shed for you. These are God's gifts for God's people. Let us share together.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, go now in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. We share signs and words of peace with one another.